Whoa, did you feel that? Uh, anyway, hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. In this video, I'll be previewing Shake That City from AG. Whoa, um, note, just like most of my previews, this video shows prototype components and is subject to change. Well, this city isn't gonna build itself now, is it? Let's get started. Shake That City is a competitive city building tile laying game for one to four players. Players are city planners that place buildings across their own boards for points. Through clever planning, each type of building in row or column may be scored at the end. To set up, load the cubes into the cube shaker and place it in the center of the table. Then place the round tracker nearby with the round tracker disc on the one space. All players then take a player board and decide collectively which side to play with. Till you get the hang of things, the landlock side is recommended. Then everyone places their player board in front of themselves. Each player takes a set of seven bonus tiles with the backs showing one to four. Then the last player to shake something becomes the active player. They place the bonus corner tile in the northwest space and shuffles the remaining bonus tiles face down. Then distributes them face up along the top and left side of their board like this. Every other player puts their tiles matching this configuration on their own board. Keeping all bonus point tiles facing the same cardinal direction regardless of each other's orientation around the table. So a two player game would look like this. It's crucial that they all match exactly, like it's essential. Lastly, place the score reference cards showing the matching board with inside of all players to reference how each building type will score in the end, which I'll go over more in a bit. Now we're ready to begin. Shake That City is played out over 15 rounds. Each round consists of four phases. Shake the cubes, choose building colors, place building tiles, and end of round. During the shake cubes phase, the active player shakes the cube shaker. While the cube shaker is sturdy, it's best not to pick it up and shake it along the table, making sure it gets a good mix. Before this next step, make sure the cube shaker is aligned in the same orientation as the player boards and not angled. Then the active player pushes in the slider till they hear the cubes fall and lifts it to reveal the 3x3 cube grid pattern left behind. Ugh, so satisfying. During the choose building colors phase, players select a set of colored cubes that match a type of building in the game. Starting with the active player, they choose one color of cubes that only they can place, while all other players are free to choose one set of different colored cubes that remain, just not the ones chosen by the active player. During the place building tiles phase, take building tiles matching the color cubes chosen in the last phase. Gray cubes are roads, green are parks, black are factories, blue are shops, and red are homes. Each player simultaneously takes those tiles for each cube and places them in the grid pattern shown on their player board following these rules. Tiles must go in empty spaces on their player board, so no overlapping. The tiles must be in the same pattern and orientation as shown on their perspective of the cube grid, meaning the tile pattern can't be flipped or rotated in any way. At any time, if the tile pattern chosen won't fit on the player board, they must choose another color to use. Afterwards, the tiles aren't moved for the rest of the game. They are locked in. If a player fulfills either side of a bonus tile by having four specific buildings in the row or column shown by the arrow, or filling the entire row or column, they flip the tile face down to be scored at the end of the game. The corner bonus tile can also be flipped if there are two of each tile type anywhere in their board. After everyone has finished placing tiles, play moves on to the end of round phase. The round tracker disc is moved one space. All cubes are returned to the cube shaker, and the next player clockwise to the active player becomes the new active player for the next round. For the first 12 rounds, things play out exactly like this, but in rounds 13, 14, and 15, all building patterns are available to select and place, including the one chosen by the active player. After round 15, play moves on to endgame scoring, where all tiles placed on player boards are scored. Like I said at the beginning, we'll be scoring the landlock side of the player boards. Homes score two points for every group of homes on the player board, regardless of size, but they score zero if adjacent to a factory. All that smog? Shops score if they connect it to the concrete edge of the board or to a road that connects to it. Then based on the zone it is in, it scores one point for the green zone, two points for brown, and three points for gray. Next are factories. Score one point if adjacent to any number of other factories or roads, or two points if adjacent to both. Parks score similarly to factories, but instead if they are adjacent to any number of homes or factories, they score one or two points for both. Roads score one point per road that connects to the concrete edge of the board, meaning single roads along the edge of the board will score one point, and all others connected to it will score one point as well. Lastly, total up the points shown on all face-down bonus tiles. 
The player with the most points wins. In case of a tie, the player with the most flip bonus tiles wins. If there's still a tie, the player with the least amount of empty spaces wins. If there's still a tie, they share in the victory. Some features here include a vibrant spatial puzzle that's easy to play, but hard to master. Really thinking about how best to place each building to score big and to not have any pesky buildings come in and mess it all up for less points is a very tricky, or should I say shaky, balance. While the grid pattern is a constraint, it isn't limited to being placed anywhere as long as the configuration of tiles fits. And that shaker can really mess up all your best laid plans. But it's just so satisfying to use. <laughs> Next up, we've got variety. I only really talked about the landlocked side of the player board, but there's a whole other side to explore, the beachfront. This side has buildings that take advantage of the new beachfront with only two sides of concrete for roads and makes scoring some buildings slightly different to take advantage of those sweet beach views. Also, being able to play the game solo to puzzle things out all by yourself is a huge plus too. <clears throat> and you didn't hear it from me, but there's some really awesome stretch goals in the works for it too. No, nope, well, hopefully that's a little look out for that. This game is definitely for players that enjoy puzzly games where they try to optimally place all their tiles. When it happens, it's pure joy. But spatial awareness is definitely key. So if a delicious spatial puzzle wrapped around a city building game sounds like your jam, then you should definitely go check this one out. I put a link in the description below for you to check out further. That's it, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to help out the channel, tapping the like button really helps. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on future videos. Until next time, stay geeky. Keep gaming. Then the player, then the player with the, then the player. <laughs> Afterwards, okay. You humans, humans. When it happens, it's pure joy.